Should you buy Peninsula Energy? Can it 10x? Well, on this channel, we only cover assets that are in the early stages of a mega trend that could potentially provide life changing returns. And we strip away all the hype, all the BS, just rock solid fundamentals. What is going on behind the scenes with these companies? Because again, every CEO can talk a great game about their company, every single one. That's why it's important to stay focused on the financials and what's actually going on with these companies behind the scenes. So first up, Peninsula Energy is a uranium exploration company in the United States. They have a flagship project in Wyoming. So really they're a uranium explorer in the best jurisdiction possible because the United States government, again, is pumping billions of dollars into their domestic uranium supply. So all these assets that have uranium and control it should do extremely well. But all that's well and good, right? Many assets can claim that. What about the financials? Well, here is the company's balance sheet. How many assets does it have and how many liabilities does it have? We don't want these assets drowning in debt, right? Well, they have total assets as of December 2023 of $109 million. Now, this number has changed a little bit because this is December 2023, but that's the last time I could find a balance sheet for this company. So $109 million of assets and total liabilities of 23 million. So therefore they have net assets of 83 million. Very, very, very positive. They're not going bankrupt anytime soon and they are just swimming in assets. So that is so far a plus. Now, what have they been up to since December 2023. Well, if we look at their cash flow activity, we get a clear insight into what is going on. Well, they just started generating revenue, right? Receipts from customers of 12 million. This is in thousands. So that's $12 million of revenue for the first time. Pretty positive. Now that's very small, right? But the trend is up. They're just starting to generate some revenue. Administration and corporate costs, 5 million staff costs, 2.6 million. So from operations, so far they've generated $4.8 million. Again, very positive, still very small, but positive, right? Moving in the right direction. Lance project development costs. This is their main mind. This is how much it's costing to develop this mine, $33 million in half a year. So now all of a sudden, their assets at the beginning of the year don't seem so big, right? $108 million, they're burning through $33 million every half a year. But guess what? In the first six months of the year, they issued equity securities of $114 million. This is not ideal right? Now, it can be ideal if you're issuing equities, printing shares, dumping them on the market. You wonder why Peninsula Energy hasn't done much. It's because they're dumping $114 million on the market. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, if they were to spend that $114 million on something worth $120 million, then the net gain would be $6 million of equity accrued to the shareholders of Peninsula. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a little risky owning these assets. You really have to trust that they know what they're doing, right? And they have good assets. So we can dive into that as well. And obviously it cost them $7 million to get their shares. So net cash from financing activities, they were able to have an inflow of $106 million. Again, they're swimming in cash. The share price didn't dip too much. So after all is said and done, they started July with $99.9 million of cash. So very healthy balance sheet. They've already done the dilution. So that's in the past. Current shareholders that look at this asset or current holders of the asset get to understand the true financial nature, right? Very rock solid balance sheet, very low liabilities, $100 million in cash. What do we have to look forward to? Because that's really what matters. If they waste this money, then it's just pure share dilution. But what are they doing with this money? What does the future have in store for Peninsula Energy? Well, the U.S. ban on Russian sourced uranium has unlocked $2.7 billion in funding in support of domestic nuclear energy. So we do have the United States government subsidizing, pumping money into U.S. companies. Again, they're highlighting that because it's very good for domestic producers. Midterm and long-term contract pricing is firming up in 2024 while the spot market has softened. So what they're saying is the spot market that retail traders trade 
is declining, but utilities are starting to pay more and more and more for scarce uranium. That's obviously going to lift the spot price of uranium. Peninsula Energy is trying to capitalize on that. When you look at Peninsula en Energy, you're really looking at the Lance Project in Wyoming. So they have different areas of production, right? In red, we have the Ross production area. They're saying that's an estimated remaining resource of 6.4 million pounds. So at $100 per pound uranium, that's $600 million of revenue just from the Ross production area. That is pretty massive. $600 million just from that tiny area. Then in blue, we see the Kendrick production area. Estimated resource, 20 million pounds of uranium. So what's 20 million pounds times $100? Two billion dollars of revenue just from the blue shaded area. Then we have the Barber Exploration Project area in green, which holds 32 million pounds. They're saying of inferred resources, right? We don't know for certain, but if that's the case, these guys control tens of millions of pounds of uranium, which is billions of dollars in revenue in the future, especially as the uranium spot price rises. What happens if it goes to $200 per pound? Then these guys are making billions of dollars of profit, right? So healthy balance sheet, amazing potential, lots of uranium in the ground, an amazing growth potential as they explore these other regions. So this is what they're doing right now with this asset. Phase two expansion ongoing, production capacity expansion from existing 0.8 million pounds per year to up to 2 million pounds per year. So 2 million times 100 is $200 million of revenue. That is very, again, positive, right? What happens if it goes to $200 per pound? That's $400 million of revenue. So the longer they wait as this multi-decade supply crunch plays out, the more future revenue they're supposed to generate. So this is the timeline of when we can expect to see some of this cash flow. Q3 2024, commence mine unit preconditioning operations. End of 2024, they want plant commissioning and they want production start right? Q3 2025, project projected to achieve sustainable, positive, free cash flow. That means earnings. That is really important. If you don't want to keep being diluted by this company, then just dumping shares in the market. We need earnings at this point, right? Or they can take on debt, but either way, projected free cash flow starting Q3 2025, positive. Now, these are the numbers, right? Three-year estimated production, 2025, under a million pounds. That is $100 million at $100 spot price. 2026, under 2 million pounds again, or 1.5 million pounds per year. That's $150 million in revenue. Nothing crazy, right? What I will say that isn't ideal is that $100 per pound spot price will only be generating $150 million of revenue all the way out to 2027 means that it's going to take a lot of time to get the rest of the uranium out of the ground, right? So these guys are going to have weak and small earnings in 2026 and 2027. That's just a fact. Now, a long-term investor can see the potential. As the uranium price rises, their land, the uranium in the ground is going to be worth a fortune, right? But as far as earnings go, low earnings, low revenue. for Their, their market cap is already almost $300 million. So their revenue is let's say it's 150 million dollars the market cap would be twice that of sales which means that the upside is going to be slightly limited unless we just get a skyrocketing uranium spot price the peninsula has six existing off-date contracts covering about 40 percent of planned production over the next 10 years so they've already sold about 40 percent of their planned production and they've committed to deliver six million pounds. So this is an early stage company just starting to get into production. It's going to take some time to get this thing really significantly cash flowing. But obviously, positive earnings growth is massive. This company will deserve a premium. So growth in price projected for the future. The question is how much? So this comes from Canaccord Genuity, a mining company research firm. This is their summary. Peninsula remains on track for first production from Lance before year end 2024 and first sales late in the first half of 2025, leading into first production, both Boss Energy 
I think that's BOE and Paladin experience significant outperformance versus the peer group. When you're starting up production earnings, that tends to boost the price of an asset, right? So when they start producing in 2025, they're expecting them to outperform against their peers. That's positive. Assuming Peninsula delivers on its timing and budget commitments, the scope for outperformance is even greater in our view, given it currently trades at 50 cents per pound of controlled uranium and 6.4x their projected earnings in 2026. That kind of tells you where they are at. Because the way markets work is they price in future earnings, right? All this future growth is actually already priced in. So the market is already valuing this company at 6.4 times their future earnings. Now that is a six price to earnings ratio, which is very, very low. Normally a price to earnings ratio under 20 or so is considered solid six times their future price to earnings. So if this were to reach a 20 times their future earnings, this would be a three or four X from here easily, right? Now, again, that's not factoring in a massive spike in the price of uranium. There's lots of unknowns, but a six price to earnings ratio based on 2026 earnings is not terrible at all. It's not overvalued. So that's why Canaccord Genuity retains the buy rating and a price target of 20 cents to allow for dilution because they do see the risk of dilution, right? This company loves diluting and pumping shares into the market, right? Now, they don't take on debt, maybe because interest rates are too high. Maybe when interest rates become low, they'll be more incentivized to do that. But still, there's growth ahead regardless of dilution. 20 cent price target. Hard to disagree with that. That's pretty conservative, right? That's assuming the spot price of uranium stays flat and doesn't grow or skyrocket. But 20 cent, pretty conservative, not too bad. That means there is deep value in this asset. Now, will they dilute their shareholders again and when, right? Great question. Post its 106 million Australian dollar capital raising. Peninsula is fully funded to September 2025, right? So they're not going to dilute their shareholders until 20 September 2025. That is really positive. You can breathe a sigh of relief there, right? And they're expected to start generating some profits in 2025. So very positive, right? Current shareholders have nothing to worry about as far as dilution as of right now. And they have enough money to get them to the point where they will start generating cash potentially at much higher uranium spot prices. Additionally, the company continues to work with its advisors to explore debt options, which could support working capital requirements and balance sheet flexibility, meaning not diluting their shareholders. So this is the current projection based on all available data for this company, right? The current sales growth, right? 2024 estimate, they're still saying no real sales. 2025 estimate, $20 million of sales. 2026, estimate $85 million of sales. And then EBITDA, which is essentially earnings before taxes, depreciation, amortization, that's cash flow, is $43 million of net cash flow earnings. Currently, the market cap is like $270 million. So that's why they're trading at about 6x their 2026 EBITDA. So that's where we're priced currently. Plenty of room for upside. Any upside in the uranium spot price and this thing will have to skyrocket or it will be deep value, right? Because they're supposed to be cash flowing in a few years. I agree with Canaccord Genuity that they could hit 20 cents per share. That is a very conservative price target. That's like a 1x and that's within the next year or two. But as the uranium price rises and as they start to generate more and more free cash flow and earnings, this could be a 5x over the next two plus years just in terms of growth, because when you're buying, you want to buy when there is deep value. So currently, it's not like this is trading negative to its future earnings or anything ridiculous. It's a fair conservative valuation. There is upside, an easy 1x in the next two years, and then an easy 5x after that, and then potentially a 10x as this thing becomes a cash cow, because the market tends to price in future growth very quickly right? Currently totally positive entry point for this asset, especially since dilution is done with.